It's Thursday, 20 November. My name's Juan Brown. You're watching the Blanco Lirio channel. We're in the middle of another Northern California wind event and it's time for an Orville update. Sitting here on the edge of the emergency spillway at the 901 foot elevation, you can get a sense that the Oroville Dam is the tallest earth dam in the nation. We're here in a part of the uh, Oroville complex we haven't seen in a couple of years since they've reopened at the boat ramp on the right side of the dam, right at the inlet to the main spillway right there. So I spent a day sitting through boring public meetings today to get you an update on what is the plan for the Oroville Reservoir Flood Control for this year, 2019-2020. And it looks a lot like last year's plan. Let's go inside where it's a little less windy and check it out. There's the trail access over there. That's gonna get reopened here soon. There's the outside edge of the RCC walls. There's your emergency spillway. Ginormous amphitheater and the riprap right down to the secant cutoff wall. And of course the new road going around the emergency spillway. Though this emergency spillway is intended to only be used in the event of an emergency where the water will simply pour over the top of the hardened walls at 901 feet and this road would be wiped out. If we get enough rain this year, planners are hoping to refill the reservoir right back up to nearly full, very close to 900 feet by the end of this year's water rain season next spring. New RCC walls going up to the old uh... Head, head gate structure for the main spillway. Barriers are down. And this illustrates the delicate balance and incredible responsibility of operating such a critical piece of our infrastructure. Spillway right there. Unfortunately, I can't get a very good view of the new main spillway from here. You may recall the new spillway was operated for the first time last April. A very thorough inspection was done after that first spill. Here's some pictures from that inspection. I'll put a link to the inspection report in the description below, which is available to anyone online. The independent board of consultants who inspected the spillway during the spill at 26,000 CFS and after the spill noted that the spillway meets and exceeds its design intent. And that the new spillway here at Oroville is now the most highly monitored spillway in the United States. There's a lot of gauges and cameras attached to the spillway to monitor its progress in real time. Check out the details in the report. I know at the beginning I stated that these public meetings are rather boring, but they're very important. Senate Bill, California State Senate Bill 955, authored by Jim Nilsen, the local state senator, Republican. Yes, there are still some Republicans here in California. That's Jim there in the middle. Set up the Oroville Dam Citizens Advisory Commission to meet about once a quarter to keep a fire lit underneath the tail of DWR to make sure that things run correctly at Oroville and to get public transparency and access to DWR and the Oroville facility 
and make discussions about the future and future improvements of the facility. Today's meeting of the Advisory Commission focused primarily on the operation of the Oroville Reservoir for the 2019-2020 flood season, as presented by John Lehi of the State Water Project. Oroville is a keystone reservoir of the State Water Project to provide water throughout the state, but during the flood season, Oroville needs to perform to prevent flooding in Marysville, Yuba City, and Sacramento. And of course, Oroville located directly downstream from the facility. The Feather River merges with the Yuba River near Marysville, Yuba City, and the levees there constrain the maximum flows to these values. Note that the Marysville Dam was never built in the 1970s, and thus the middle and south fork of the Yuba River run unconstrained. Only the north fork of the Yuba is managed via the Bullard's Bar Reservoir. Because of these downstream limitations, Oroville is limited to a total outflow of about 150,000 cubic feet per second, though the spillways are designed to a much higher capacity. Shown by the blue line on this graph, you can see that only three times since the Oroville Dam has been built have they hit near 150,000 CFS outflow. So like an accumulator in an airplane or a shock absorber in a car, a reservoir during flood season acts to smooth out the wild variations of inflows and produce a more predictable and smoother outflow. In order to do this safely during flood season, you gotta maintain a flood pool or a nor lower than normal reservoir elevation until later in springtime when things start to dry out here in California, and then let the snow in the watershed slowly fill up the reservoir and top it off. Unfortunately, here at Oroville, the boys are still using outdated data from the original flood control manual for when the reservoir was built in 1970 from the Corps of Engineers. This data is slowly, very slowly being updated. Until then, they gotta maintain what's called an enhanced flood pool a lower water level in the reservoir by about 15 feet to make up for the rather warm winter weather we're seeing and the increased number of what's called atmospheric rivers or warm rain events hitting Northern California. Once we get out of flood season and return to our long, hot, dry summer, we can continue to allow the reservoir to fill right up to full. The level of the reservoir is normally controlled by output, water output from the Hyatt power plant. If this enhanced flood pool is ever encroached and cannot be maintained with just the power plant alone, that's when the spillway is put into operation. And this little bump in the graph here from last year is when the spillway was operated for the first time in April, the new spillway. This enhanced flood pool also varies with the wetness index or how soaking wet the watershed is. It takes about 10 to 12 inches of steady rain to saturate the soil in the watershed to really get the water flowing into Oroville Reservoir. What about the snow melt during these crazy atmospheric warm river events that hit Northern California? According to John, the snow melt only accounts for 10 to 15% of the total inflows in such an event. And then during the springtime, the snow melt from the watershed is very predictable and easily managed by the Hyatt power plant and the main spillway if needed. These are some of the smaller reservoirs located high up in the Feather River watershed. Note these smaller reservoirs do not have gated spillways. They simply reach a certain elevation and pour out. Some of these small reservoirs also produce electricity. So there's a lot of exciting new technology in the weather prediction business, especially with vertical looking Doppler radar that can accurately determine the freezing level of these moist weather systems as they approach California. I understand there's also funding to get the US Air Force's Hurricane Hunter aircraft over here during our flood season, which is opposite of the 
hurricane season over in Florida. These aircraft could easily help determine the freezing levels of these weather systems before they even approach California so operators can release water sooner in the event of a heavy weather event inbound. So I hope this gives you a better understanding of the operations plan at Oroville for the 2019-2020 flood season. Currently the lake level is at 776 feet. We had a great year last year and they were able to top off the reservoir. So at 776 feet, hopefully we can get the water level back up. They're predicting rain and snow in the mountains starting next week and start raising that water level up to about the 835 to 850 foot elevation, the new enhanced flood pool elevation to get us through the flood season. And then once we're past the winter flood season, allow the water level to rise all the way back up to nearly full 900 feet. Regarding your question on the Hyatt power plant, yeah, normally there's six turbines there in the Hyatt power plant. They're still down to five turbines, and that's going to be that way for several years to come as they're going to replace one turbine at a time as each turbine goes through overhaul. Now, during the emergency, they haven't had time to even finish the first turbine, so they're running on five turbines. That still gives them a Hyatt power plant outflow capacity about 14, 15,000 cubic feet per second. There's also some valves that need to be rebuilt or restored or upgraded associated with each of those turbines in the high up power plant and that too is taking time. So we'll keep an eye on the rain gauge and the weather and the water levels there at Lake Orville. If you got more questions or want to see some more different aspects of this operation, let me know. We'll see you here. Thanks for watching and thanks for your support on Patreon. Where's the rain?